The presenters are lining up, so I want to get right to it. Our first presenter is Mr. Ricky Miner. Such a, a surreal moment for me. Um, you know, I just I got a chance to meet Chuck Rainey for the first time and, you know, listen to a lot of records. And now I'm here because of my love for Abraham. Um, it was 1977, and I, I bought this record, this guy um, that everyone was raving about, Al Jarreau, uh, Look to the Rainbow. And... I felt something. It was I, I heard the record, but I felt something, and something that kind of hit me in a place where I never, never really, you know, I was playing bass and I was, you know, doing my gigs, but I felt something, and I, and I wanted to feel that again. So I listened to that record, and then it, you know, until it turned white because I just played it over, and then I found and bought another one, and I listened to it, and the feeling was so amazing and then I found out that Abraham was playing at the Baked Potato and I didn't really have the money to to get in so I hung out by the back door until somebody left and then I kind of snuck in and I really wasn't old enough to to be in there to buy a drink or anything so I kind of hid out but I I, I walked up to Abraham and nervous you know because you know, musicians, you know, you just never know how they're going to be. But he was cool, you know, because sometimes they're like, okay, the go away kid, you bother me. But he was cool. He's like, you know, what are you doing? Hi, brother. You know, always kind, always a kind word. And uh, I, I remember that. And he was always and has never changed, has been that same guy to me. And I was playing my, so then I had that to look up to. And I was fortunate to to go on tour with Al Jarreau. And, uh, and I had those shoes to fill, and I thought, and I went to Al and I said, you know, I, you have all these great bass players who have worked with you, and I'm, you know, and Nathan East and, and Freddie Washington and all these guys that played with you. And I was nervous, and he said, uh, I'll tell you what, what Abe would say. He would say that you are here because of what you bring to the music. It's always what you bring to the music. Your gift is enough. And I've taken that with me always in knowing that, um, that an Abe was there in Japan and had flown into Japan to do uh, a record or do some work there and I hadn't seen him in all that time and he came to an Al Jarreau gig that I was playing and he said Abe's there in the audience, you know. So I played and the show was over and I looked for Abe, and there was no Abe. He was gone. So now I'm thinking, okay, well maybe my gift wasn't enough. Because uh, he, he was like, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> That's not the way uh, it's done. So I, I was, you know, I, I thought, well maybe I wouldn't see him. I wouldn't get a chance to see him. And I got to the hotel room, and my light was blinking. And there was a wonderful message of, uh, from Abe saying, Hey, I just flew in, I'm a little jet lag. I just came back, I want to tell you, brother, be encouraged. And that's the thing he said to me just minutes ago, be encouraged and encouraged. So, thank you, Abe, thank you. Fresh of a short thing, so we'll make this brief. Uh, for me, and obviously, as you will hear from all these people that will come up, this is a surreal moment, and I mean that from all the honesty in the bottom of my heart. I grew up, I was born in New York, raised in Puerto Rico, and in the late 70s, I think it was like 78, 79, I got a hold of my first guitar player magazine, and when I opened it up, the magazine had to be like a year old already. 
And I was reading and I found an article of this bass player called Abe Laborio. And I started reading, I had no idea who he was. And as soon as I read that he was from Mexico, instantly I felt a connection of pride of him being a Latino and me being a Latino. And it was like, oh, okay. And it talked about how he started playing guitar and he had an accident and he cut his finger and he, he couldn't play that well and his brother got him a bass. And I learned the whole story. I kept on reading it over and over. It was like my bedtime story. Because finally, after seeing all these magazines and everything, I found somebody that I related to. Fast forward, three years later, I come to Los Angeles to a place called BIT. And who comes to give a master class? Mr. A. Memorial. Now, I am the kid that is at the candy store hyper because he had too much sugar. I, I, I can't control myself. So I'm hovering, I'm around him, he's playing, I'm jumping. Uh, he jumps too. We're all around. So at the end of his master class, I finally make my way up to him and I'm going, uh, Mr. Abraham, hi, my name is Oscar, I am from Puerto Rico. Hey, and he gives me a bug and he embraces me. And we start walking and I carry his bass and behind the original Musicians Institute in Hollywood Boulevard on top of the Wax Museum, there was a Burger King behind and that was a parking lot for it. For the next two hours, I spoke to Abraham Laborio of life, clubbing, bass playing, everything. I mean, this man, at that, still into this day, but at that time, he was one of the top players in the city. And he took two hours of his time to this little kid out of nowhere to talk to me. And of course, I don't have to tell you I didn't sleep for the next few days. <laughs> I could, I was, it, uh, the words cannot describe what that it meant to me. This is 30 years ago, and I still feel the same emotion when I meet him, when I talk to him. But if you thought that wasn't good enough, like three days later after my encounter with him, there's a clipboard, and there's a message that, that students used to get, and it said, Oscar, call Joe Sample for an audition. And I'm thinking somebody's pulling my leg. So I go to the office and I said, who took this message? And the director of the school, her name is Rebecca Natalia. She said, oh, Abraham recommended you for an audition with Joe Sample. And I'm going, this is not possible. This man didn't hear me play a note. He just talked to me and he recommended me to an audition with Joe Sample. I went, and for those of you that perhaps got the pleasure or honor of meeting Joe Sample, he was an intimidating kind of person. You know, serious man, deep voice. And his first words was like, yeah, he told me about you. Yeah. I said, what can he possibly tell? But I, I was there. And I, I played and I left and then I got called and I did some stuff with him, but I just kept on saying, who is this man, Abel Borger? This is not normal, people are not like that. And throughout the years, my career started to build and then I will see him and we got to do tours uh, in the same circuit. And the love, the, the, the respect, everything that you can imagine coming always from him. And to this very afternoon that we did the first Latin-based round table, it's never ceased. It's always been the most impressive thing that you can get because they always say if you wanna never be your idol, there's a saying that says, never meet your idol because you may completely lose that illusion that you have from that person. In this case, it has been exactly the opposite. It has only enhanced it to levels beyond comprehension. So for me, from 1970-something reading a magazine to stand here today and be able to tell him all of this stuff, I feel like I'm the getting the award. I'm just, I'm gonna give him something later on, but I'm, I'm really, uh, full circle here, and Abraham, I want to say I thank you, I admire you for your musicianship. I am so proud of you for the way that you as a Latino has represented me and so many others. But most of all, I love you for the man of God that you are and for oh, yeah. the love that you have shown to all of us. Amen. Thank you.
against this next person in a homegrown angle, sitting two seats away from the 1999 Bass Player Lifetime Achievement Award recipient Chuck Rainey, sitting next to Steve Bailey, it's the 2007 Bass Player Lifetime Achievement Award recipient, welcome Lee Sklar. For, it must be going on 40 years now when we both had dark hair and I had more of it. And, uh, I just want to say, first off, I've never known a musician who wears his joy of music and family and life better than Abe does. When you see him performing, he's like, a, like the burning bush. He's this nuclear explosion that takes place. Um, and I, I was just thinking back, watching, I, I told you I was going to tell this story, but I was watching an old Tonight Show, uh, w it wasn't old, when it was on, it was on, uh, but with Johnny Carson, and Lee Rittenauer was the guest on the show, and so they, and Johnny goes here, I'd like to, Lee Rittenauer, and they come out and play, and there's, music starts, and there's Lee standing there, like this, and there's Abe. <laughs> eating up the entire stage, and I thought anybody in the audience who's watching this thinks he's Lee written on it. It's, it's the only thing you ever look at when the band's playing. He's the most commanding presence on the stage. But I know we're short on time, and I don't want to hear these guys play. So I just want to say I love this man dearly. He's I, when he sent me a note and asked me to do this, I was so humbled and. Uh, and kind of just brought a, a tear to my eye because he's one of the wells that I've drawn from in this business, and both as a human being and as a musician. I've never known a better musician in my life and a better human being in my life than yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and now let's bring up Abraham's son, Mateo. Spending too much time and letting them get the music. Um, it's all about, I guess, the message that he always contended or, or gave to us and gave to all, all of us is like, music is love, and and not only does he represent that through music, but he represents that through his life. And everybody that gets to interact with him, gets to know him, feels embraced, feels loved, feels touched, feels we all feel elevated by him. Yes. So. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what else to say. <laughs> that hasn't been said. Um, yeah. Yeah. Hey, man. Thanks, Blair is proud to present you a lifetime of junior year. Times and I'm going to say it again. Very few human beings in a lifetime get a chance to discover something that they love to do. Even fewer get a chance to do what they love all the time. And I have all of you, all the listeners, 
my entire bringing and the Lord to thank for the double blessing of having discovered something that I love to do and the chance of being invited to do what I love. This evening, um, Ricky Minor, Oscar Cartaya, Liz Clark, and my son Mateo have presented me this instigated by bass player life. <laughs> <laughs> and I have the privilege of playing with the, the lifetime band of brothers and friends that anybody could have sworn. Who's on Marion Woodward? Good afternoon, Tom. Greg Madison, and Peter. And uh, I have the privilege of my beautiful Lynn, my wife. Thank you for a lifetime of believing in me so that I can celebrate a lifetime achievement. <laughs> Thank you. 
that was called that was called Fiesta Linda from our first Open Hands self-titled album. And the self-title is Open Hands, not Fiesta Linda. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Partita and go you. Uh, you know what? That only features me, man. Let's do. Let's do. Uh, <laughs> let's do. Take your time so he can play. Okay. 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 Take your time. Uh, <laughs> uh, do you need the, the clarinet? Yeah, I have it. Yeah. Actually, let's have a brand disagreement. Okay. And let's do partita, and then I can use the a guitar aspect of the playing. Cool. Let's do it. We just had a band disagreement. Hey, man. <laughs> I'm pissed. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Switch. 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 Well, the song that we just did was written by Greg Matheson. It is called, Everything New Becomes Old Again. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> everything old becomes new again. Every, everything old. Yeah, everything old becomes new again. <laughs> which means that I'm forgetting. <laughs> The next song that we're going to do was written, composed, and arranged by Justo and Mario. And the reason why I vetoed avoiding this song is because this is my day. <laughs> <laughs> and this is going to feature our upbringing. Justo was born and raised in Colombia. And they have some rhythms in Colombia that are very similar to the rhythms that I was born and raised with in Mexico. So we're going to play ethnic music for you. Greg Matheson's mother's last name is Lopez, so he's ethnic too. <laughs> and Bill Maxwell was born and raised in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. But the southern, but southern Oklahoma. Yeah, so he's very ethnic.